to, and I'm a busy guy. I'd like to welcome a really busy guy to the show, Alderman Bob Fioretti. He's Alderman of the Second Ward. He's also Second Ward Committeeman of the Democratic Party of Cook County, as well as a partner in the law firm of Fioretti and Lower. And now, officially a candidate for mayor of the city of Chicago. Alderman. Thanks, Vince. Welcome. Pleasure to be here, really, truly. Thank you. Thank you Thank for you. taking the time. Uh, if we may first focus uh, on your being uh, the Italian American, the first Italian American with a really good chance of becoming mayor of the city of Chicago. Yes, <laughs> yes I am, how's that? And yeah. uh, without saying anything further, you know, I'm excited about it, I'm excited about the prospects of being the mayor of the city of Chicago, and I am, I am thrilled because of our heritage uh, and, and the values that we bring as Italian Americans. I have to say, uh, a full disclosure, my mother was Polish, okay. so, um, but I, I, I think the values that we have as family, uh, Italian families have, uh, a belief in our faith, our community, giving back, and doing what's better for those behind us and helping bring those along are what's, I think, not only just in the Italian families, but it's in many families all across this, this, the city of Chicago, all across this region, and across the counties, and across the area, uh, that, that re, re bringing those values uh, to the forefront of government, of helping people, of having a good education, trying to find jobs, good public safety, and a good financial awareness and, and sound financial footing for all of our governments is what we need. And I think we learned that in the Italian home especially. Yeah, and your uh, your father came in through Ellis Island? Yes, my um, actually my last name, uh, as you have said, is Fioretti. It's not actually, it is Fioretti. But Fioretti means little flower. And uh, my grandfather was found in a field of little flowers, and he was raised in an orphanage. Uh, met my grandmother there. Uh, they had my father, another uh, one of my aunts. Uh, they came across the boat. Uh, I have a picture, I have to tell you, I have a picture of that boat in my city hall office, and I look at it all the time. Uh, it, and it just brings to me the spirit of what my dad must have seen when he was seven years old, came across the Atlantic and looked at the uh, Statue of Liberty and the excitement of a little kid's eyes and what his family must have felt. I mean, they left uh, Italy with just the clothes on their backs and a hope uh, to bring a better life for their kids and their family. And um, I think of my grandmothers and, my, and both of my parents were here today, uh, they'd say, well, this was what it was all about, to having somebody run for the mayor of the city of Chicago, somebody that believes in the city of Chicago, somebody can bring the hopes of the old country here and develop those, those dr into real dreams and real vision for all people of the city of Chicago. How proud would they be? Because this is the fruition of all their dreams taking place right well, now. Well, you know, and I have to, not only that, I, I must say that when my grandfather, um, when my, my dad started school, he started in the Chicago public school systems. Uh, he only made it to seventh grade His because uh, my grandfather passed away, uh, early sudden death, and um, my dad had to go to work and, and support the rest of the family. Um, and he was he was out there in seventh and eighth grade uh, fi trying to find a job to, to support the rest of the family. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you how proud I know the, the grandparents were. Uh, my uncle, was, I used to call him Uncle Merrick's, but his name was Americus. They named him after America Is for coming right? here. You know, and so they had, they had great hope and great beliefs in this country, and uh, uh, as we all do, and, and we still do. And of course, my voice is cracking, uh, it's, uh, but uh, you know, when I think about what they would do and uh, how they would feel to see that their grandson, first generation American on the Italian side, um, is running for mayor of the city of Chicago. Fantastic. You grew up in Roseland? Yes. And I know there's something I want to ask you about. You, uh, you were a recipient of the Pullman Scholarship. Yep. My dad ended up working at the Pullman Company. Uh, he grew up, they actually moved to Pullman, uh, and they lived a few blocks away from the factory. He had a job in the Pullman factory. Uh, and any um, individual whose parents or, or grandparents worked at the Pullman factory was eligible for a Pullman scholarship. And to this day, I serve on the uh, George M. Pullman Educational Board, uh, which still administers scholarship, but in a much more broader basis uh, to a lot of individuals. Um, and we do that every year, and I'm proud to serve on that board uh, because I'm a firm believer that 
to get our kids through college nowadays, and, and it was difficult even in the 70s when I was going through college, but it's even more difficult now because of the financial constraints and how costly it is for college, that we need to find ways to create scholarships and give scholarships to those uh, to go to college. Education is everything. And, and you attended uh, Northern? Yeah, I, I, well, U of, University of Illinois for undergrad, and I received my law degree from Northern Illinois University. Okay, then just to move ahead a little bit about uh, what you could tell me, the history of Italian-Americans in the Illinois government. I, I believe that as far back as the 1800s, we had a couple of Italian uh, aldermen, but what is your reflection on of how we've you know, come up, uh, if you would say, through the ranks and get to the point that you're at right now? Well, I, you know, I, I think sometimes our, um, we've never really pushed enough in terms of the... Um, of making sure that Italian Americans are in the either the state legislature, whether it's the House or Senate, or in uh, local um, offices. I mean, there's a lot in the suburbs where we have mayors that are of uh, a lot of the uh, suburban communities have uh, Italian Americans as um, uh, mayors and as aldermen or councilmen in their uh, respective suburbs. But I think uh, uh, one one aspect that we've seen in the last few years that um, the Italian American Political Action Coalition, uh, which Fred Serpe is now the president of, has helped uh, since the when it was first founded over 10, 12 years ago, uh, has helped promote Italian Americans to office throughout offices uh, throughout the whole state of Illinois, and it, it helps bring a recognition of the importance of what government does, uh, and and why government's important, and why we need uh, not just Italian Americans because uh, the Italian American Political Action Coalition has endorsed the whole array of people in its past and uh, uh, they look for good candidates, good people and I know that tradition uh, carries on under, under Fred Serpe right now as, as to this day. Excellent. There's another um, organization I wanted to mention uh, that you're, I believe you're, I know you're a member of, uh, the Justinian Society? Yes I am and I am a member of the Justinian Society and I'm also proud of that. Uh, I will tell you uh, when I was going to law school uh, I don't know how many years ago, I'm not going to count them off right now, but 30 plus years ago, I did receive a scholarship, a uh, Justinian scholarship, uh, uh, when they first started that program uh, in my first year at uh, Northern Illinois, and I was proud of that. And, uh, you know, when, you, when organizations give you a scholarship or they give you a, uh, some foot up, uh, you have to give back to those organizations. And uh, the Justinians is a very proud organization in terms of its heritage, in terms of uh, reaching out, mentoring programs, uh, making sure, and, and guiding programs, helping uh, young people get through law school and all the law schools th throughout the state. And a lot, there's chapters, I believe, also, in, if not all of the law schools, uh, most of the law schools in the state of Illinois. Great. I know uh, we talked about how many uh, Italian-American public officials there are now. And the Columbus Day Parade, which was, by the way, just a great, great day weather-wise, but just a great day to be Italian. There was so much going on and so much to make us proud. Um, but it, it honored, part of the salute was to the Italian-American elected officials. There's many you feel uh, that you know about are out there now that are doing a lot for our, our cause, if you want to call it that, or for our coalition. And, and they were all out there, and, and you know what? It was great to see so many mayors uh, from the suburbs that were out there that day. Um, and it's an annual parade. It's one of the 36 annual parades that are held in the city of Chicago. Uh, but you see the pride that people have. But people came from all over to watch the parade and embrace uh, the Italian culture. To, uh, and what is the Italian culture? You know, you can sit back and you can th think of uh, uh, all of Italy from the uh, from the north, where my, my, my dad came from, from, out of Padua, to the far south end. Uh, uh, and you see, uh, you know, the Italians had an impact on virtually every end and aspect of society, whether it's uh, uh, romance, singing, the operas, um, you know, eating. Eating, especially <laughs> eating. And, and you know what? Eating was always a good thing. And, and, and just, Vince, probably at your home too. Uh, you know, my mother had to learn all the Italian dishes because she was Polish, because otherwise she wouldn't have been accepted on the, uh, uh, by my grandmother. And, you know, I look back and we would have our Sundays were great dinners. Uh, we'd have great debates over them. Uh, over the meals that we were having, sure, not about the meeting, not about what we were eating, but about whatever um, the um, 
uh, political topic of the day was from uh, John F. Kennedy being elected as the first Catholic. Uh, and I remember that one because I was in second grade and I had a friend, uh, uh, Rich Dalamali, and Rich was for the other guy. And, and we were in the, the play lot at, at St. Anthony of Padua School. And I'm like, how could you be for um, Richard Nixon? And he says, well, <laughs> and he, he finally broke down and said, well, because his name was Richard too. So I, I gave him a pass on all those years. So, and whenever I see him, I talk about, yeah, you know why you, why you were for Richard Nixon? I remember that. So, um, but you know, um, you, I think our, our, our meals would, would create that whole environment. And not only just political discussions, but to make sure we would talk about our, our various aspects of our community, our schools, our religion, uh, and our dreams of what we want to be or what we should be, and uh, parents trying to help you uh, move along on, on what your dream was as a, as a kid and how we get there. Nice. I, I mean, there were some uh, really monumental barriers that we were up against. One was language. You know, when the Italians got here, they didn't, you know, they didn't speak the language. But also the defamation that we, you know, that to this day we still continue to face some of it, whether there are movies that are out about there. But that's why, once again, it, it, people should know how proud it makes us of all the uh, elected officials we have that are honorable. You know, and this other uh, part brings it down. So I know the JCCIA still has a branch that fights the defamation. And that's true. And, and you know, and what I, I've seen, especially as being the alderman, you know, I have a... Um, a ward that's primarily African American, um, and you see, you know, as you know, as as we were growing up, you see discrimination, and then you, you see the discrimination of other communities. And together, we must fight all forms of discrimination. Make sure it doesn't happen out there, whether it's in our hiring practices or just um, a comment off the side that people can make. You know, it's totally unacceptable in our society. And if we can root that out across the board, then we're going to be a better and a greater society, and it will be a greater city as we move forward in the future. Nice. I'm a, a true believer that when you have a passion and a love for something, you obviously you do a better job of it. And to be running for mayor, I, if my reading, the passion you have for the city um, shows, I mean, just the fact that you're quite the Chicago historian. Well, I love, I love history, um, and I love the Second War because of its history. Uh, you know, the Second Ward really starts down in Bronzeville, uh, 37th Prairie, Kenny, Men, and Giles. At 35th Street, there's a statue that was dedicated to all the African American, at 35th and King Drive, uh, all the African American soldiers that died in World War I. Uh, that statue was given to this country, to that area, by the French because really? the uh, African Americans could not wear a U.S. uniform in World War I, and they wore a French uniform. They were all they died with a French uniform on. Uh, and every November 11th on uh, Veterans Day, there's a march that goes to that statue to remember all those uh, individuals. And so if, you, if we talk about discrimination, think about what that discrimination was, that people who wanted to fight in, in the war and wanted to fight for America's values couldn't because, uh, because of the color of their skin. Wow. And, you know, we have great history. We had a, there was a Civil War camp only a few blocks away in that area, uh, Camp Douglas. 6,000 Confederate soldiers died in that um, uh, camp because of the conditions uh, that had happened, how bad they were during the winters. Think about it, 6,000 soldiers died there uh, at 31st and Calumet uh, in that area. Uh, we've got McCormick Place, Soldier Field. Uh, we have the place where Mrs. O'Leary had her cow uh, is in the second ward. Uh, there's a place called the Willis Tower, uh, which is an icon in history of itself. The Sears Tower. Right? It used to be called that. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, and of course, as uh, we've we've got a lot of um, African American churches that are that are memorial. Uh, they're, they should be remembered for all the people that came to speak at the, the locations. Uh, there's a number of locations that Dr. Martin Luther King spoke uh, in and around the Second Ward. Uh, but uh, one of the other items that we also, that some the, the trivia contest that people don't remember is um, uh, 
The Cubs won their last World Series in the second ward, right off of Taylor Street uh, in 1908, before they moved to the Not north side. No, they didn't win. And Wrigley actually was built for a, a different league. Uh, I think it was built in 1912 for or what they call the Federal League. Uh, and there was a, a team called the Chicago Whales. And Wrigley Field was built for a quarter of a million dollars. And within two years, the Chicago Whales went into, uh, became bankrupt. Uh, I, I, all of a sudden, I can't think of Lucky Charlie's last name. He was was a restaurant owner. He owned about 10 restaurants, and you're familiar with restaurants. Yes, so, uh, and he had about 10 of them down in the downtown area. He bought the Chicago Cubs for half a million dollars, moved them up to Wrigley Field in 1914, and the story of uh, is not the story of the goat, as I say. It's that they moved uh, off of the west side and out <laughs> of the second ward. So, boy, you do know your city. I'll tell you. Thanks. Um, to to move along to you know to some points. Um, well, from what I've researched. You've done a great job of bringing economic development to the second ward. How would you how would you apply that to all 50 wards? Well, when we talk about economic development, we are um, breaking ground on a Pete's produce in one of the food deserts at Madison Western. Uh, that that location was under a lot of um, controversy. It took for uh, you know. It, it, it was a case of bad planning by the city, but when I came into office, we made a determination. We brought that we, as we break the super uh, the ground for that uh, superstore there, uh, it'll bring 230 jobs. We're bringing a target to Jackson and Racine, about 230 jobs also, and we're this close uh, for a Costco in the ward. Um, and I think one of the ways that you do it is is you've got to be on the phone all the time. Uh, you've got, and, and granted, those are about 700 jobs, give or take. Um, and tax but, revenue. And tax revenues of vacant lots that now become, uh, they can generate sales taxes and income taxes and uh, uh, larger property taxes for the area. Uh, we, uh, we have a Johnny's Ice House uh, further on west, too. Johnny's Ice House, too, where the Stanley Cup uh, winners um, practice now. Uh, instead of out in the suburbs, they now practice in the city, just uh, uh, a short walk from the United Center. Uh, I don't have the United Center in the uh, ward. I've got all the parking lots, I like to say, around the United <laughs> Center. Uh, but, you know, economic development in, in this climate is, is a necessity. Uh, I've helped to ensure that uh, we had uh, Miller Coors as, has its headquarters at Jackson and, and Wacker. Uh, the Willis Tower, of course, uh, bringing the Willis Tower there, which creation of jobs by the consolidation into the Willis Tower. Uh, United coming of 2,800 jobs, keeping the um, Chicago Mercantile Exchange in Chicago by giving them certain funds and a creation of, and a, uh, of 900 ad additional jobs over the next 10 years with the uh, uh, Merc. And they could have left the city of Chicago. They could have gone to either Atlanta or lower Manhattan. And I, I think it would have sent the wrong message uh, to global entities that were looking at Chicago. I mean, what kind of a message would it have been of one of the oldest companies that, that the Board of Trade was founded in 1848 if they would have left the city of Chicago and gone yeah. elsewhere? It, it, I think people would have said, why are we coming to Chicago because it, when the oldest company leaves? And it's another historical fact just for you, Vince. Uh, in 1848, the first telegraph pole was put in the city of Chicago. So The first? Yes. And, and I don't know the location, but I'm thinking maybe <laughs> have been the second ward <laughs> so um, I, I know it's been compared uh, to the state we're in of uh, we're at a level of complexity of the, the, the word to use compared to where we were after the Chicago fire well our budget is is, is faced with difficulties um, the state has has difficulties obviously as we try to attract global business here we need to work in unison with um, our governor our state, uh, our state houses uh, to bring business here. Uh, a state that's $13.1 billion in debt is a lot of problems. A city that has a projected uh, deficit next year of $654.8 million also has problems, the same, same sort of issues that face. And if we can work together, and we need to work together with our legislature, our congresspeople. Uh, we can resolve the problems. But I think ideas to resolve the future debt, the future budgets of this city and this state have to come from the people up. And people have to listen. Uh, our elected leaders and we, the elected leaders, have to listen to the people. Because uh, not that I'm surprised, because I always listen to them. Uh, but I was recently at a senior citizen home. And 
it was one nonstop idea after another yeah. uh, on how to tackle some of the problems on, on our budget, on our education, and, and getting our children on track for uh, a good education. Yeah, well, we should be able to survive. We, should, we survived the Chicago Fire and made it this far. Uh, some of the points, and it's, I'm not addressing them in order because they're all uh, of equal importance, but how would you address um, bringing jobs to the city? Well, I do jobs. Well, I, 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 I truly believe as um, not only it, it, the same way I've done as Alderman, I've taken bus, I've had bus tours with developers, realtors, uh, brokers uh, to show them aspects of, of the second ward, and I like to continually do that. I bring um, I'll bring brokers on individual trips into areas throughout the second ward and show them uh, possibilities on where to go, what's available. Uh, we're working on right now another additional uh, large grocery store chain to come into the second ward. Uh, it's a continual battle. Yeah, you need a, a very aggressive uh, Department of Economic Development, one that reads, that looks through the magazine, uh, reads the Economist, reads the Financial Times, looks for companies in Europe that want that are interested in having a global. Um, uh, presence. presence here in the city of Chicago, and I think we have sold ourselves short uh, for many a years, and we've never been as aggressive. I go into other airports, um, and not the city that, the, but they'll be advertising Denver throughout the, uh, and you can be in Portland's uh, uh, airport or somewhere else. We need to put a full court press to make O'Hare a, a global airport, and I don't think we've done enough uh, with the airport. I think uh, we're just beginning to learn. Uh, the commissioner is, is now extending a, and, and going to a lot of uh, airport fairs uh, to make it known. We, we need to increase our routes into O'Hare because O'Hare is an economic engine. And I think we have about 40-some uh, thousand employees at, uh, that are badged at the uh, O'Hare Airport. And think about that. That's a size, almost the size of a ward in the yeah. city of Chicago. And that's great, but we need to, we need to reach our, out um, and, and draw in businesses to come to uh, Chicago through O'Hare, through our, the Great Lakes, and any other way we can find them to come in here. And we, but we need an aggressive economic development department. What about education? And what they face right now. Well, you know, I look at the, at the problems of, of education. Um, we need to to listen to all the stakeholders. I think there's been a an approach that we we cut off some of them because everybody has a better idea than than the educators. And our educators and our teachers are hardworking. And I've I've seen that I, the principal. I, there's more schools in the second ward than any other ward in the city of Chicago. Um, and I listen to our principals, I listen to our, our union people, I listen to the, the teachers, and you know, they have good solutions on how to deal with it. And you know, we can't cut them off, we need them to, to be at the table to develop curriculums to make sure our curriculums are correct. Uh, we shouldn't be, we, we should be looking at what we want to do with the Board of Education. We should have turnover uh, with our school board. We need a, a school superintendent uh, as a, uh, rather than a CEO there. Uh, and together, I think we can find solutions. Granted that everybody says, oh yes, all the urban areas are alike. Well, the truth of the matter is, you know, we have 405,000 kids in the Chicago Public Schools. We have over 20,000 kids that are homeless. And when you think about it, how do, where do they go at night to read? Where do they go to, to lay their head down? Uh, how do you study further? We need, we need to come up with creative solutions, and, and with everybody at the table, I'm convinced we can do it to help our kids move them forward. A tough one right now is uh, a public safety with gangs, violence, and, and, and kids that are dying. I mean, it's not better if it's adults that are dying, but it's children that are dying in, in the streets. I mean, what, what would you propose to... Uh attack that. Well, one thing I, I've said from day one is that we do need uh, to fill the full complement of police. Uh, we're going to be a thousand short. We're, um, sh if we're not today, we will be uh, at the end of the year. We'll be over a thousand that, uh, um, of vacancies in the Chicago Police Department. We have 13,200 or so budgeted positions. We need all those positions filled and we need all those officers out on the street. It's helpful. It's a way to approach the problem, and, and we need to find uh, ways to empower our communities. The CAPS program was gutted, and, and let's see if we can put uh, meat back on the bones of the CAPS program, make it 
a type of program uh, that everybody agrees with and, and deals with the crime situation. We have black uh, clubs. We need to develop more black clubs out there. Uh, they are the eyes and ears of, of not only just the uh, police department, but all of the communities. And together, I think we can, we can fight the problems that we see with our gangs. There are 80,000 gang members in the city of Chicago. There are 70 Scary. different gangs. And when we only have 13,000 plus Chicago police officers and we don't even have those positions fully staffed, then we're faced with a problem because being a police officer is a 24 seven job. And it just isn't nine to five Monday through Friday. We need to uh, find ways to utilize our staffing, our strategic deployment, our, our use of technology to fight the gangs. But at, when we give, when we have gangs out there, we've got to give kids alternatives. We've got to give them after school programs, good baseball programs, good reading programs, good trades, good vocation. Uh, I mean, think about it. If you open up the hood of your car, you really know what you're looking at. You know, kids like to use their hands. Uh, We've got to be able to, to help them develop into systems. You know, I find it amazing when I go to the, and, and talk to the younger kids in first and second and third grade. You raise their hand, what do they want to be? They want to be police officers and firemen and, and doctors, um, and, and I'm thrilled. But you know, you get a little bit later on and you get fifth and sixth grades, you have baseball players, they want to be basketball players, you know. Uh, something transitions in the wrong way because somebody ought to tell them, well, you know what, there's not a lot of people that become basketball players or football players uh, out there. Uh, you know, let's find ways that we can, uh, maybe not every kid uh, uh, wants to go to college, but every kid should have the opportunity to go to college. And if they don't, let's find trade schools and vocational schools for them. Yeah, it's not fair to you because we're running out of time, but I did want to ask you about the casino or proposed maybe possibly temporarily at McCormick Place because I know we're losing a lot of money. Right, and you know, I, I raised the issue over uh, at a, a speech that I gave at the City Club that we, it's time for us to seriously begin the discussion of a land-based city-owned licensed casino in the city of Chicago. And to put it, uh, we could probably put it and have it up and running in within six months. Uh, at, at the at McCormick Place, uh, it may not be the ideal situation, but at least we started going, and we can we can look throughout the city on where to ultimately put it and deal with our communities, uh, see where where is the, the ideal location that'll increase tourism for our city, what we need to do, and um, Indiana, uh, according to the Bloomberg magazine, in uh, uh, June, uh, a couple of the casinos there were making uh, 50 million dollars in tax revenue. Uh, times 12 comes up with the numbers that we're looking at and I'm not saying that that's what will come into the city of Chicago but mm -hmm. that's one heck of a large that's sum a to deal with and it puts people to work it put it, it has construction jobs uh, it's something that we need to seriously uh, deal with and, and have the public discussion and then when it's when it's had we go down to Springfield and we tell the Springfield legislature look at what we're losing all of us it doesn't matter wh who you are where you are let's help the city of Chicago once and for all well there there's other issues that, that we didn't get to but I can't say that your website is phenomenal and if people are interested go to fear ready for Chicago yes uh, dot com and I'd like to thank you for being on the show. Part of my custom is to give you a box of cannolis. And thank you very much. And I'm worried about by the time I get home, I'm going to eat it because no, I'm, I'm right. so hungry. That's so what thank you. For. Thank you. Uh, I wish you all the luck in the world. And as they say, uh, you know, Italian buona fortuna. And uh, thank you for taking the time out of your busy ben show. Nay. Busy time. Thank you. Busy schedule to be on my show. Thank you. Thank you, so, Vince. Thank you. And uh, for you ready for Chicago.com, please check it out. Thank you, and I'm a busy guy. And so am I. Yes, you are. <laughs> Thanks. So I got a site too, busy, busyguy.com.